G'day guys, Aaron here. It's been a long time since I put out a video and I'm getting back into it. And the first thing I wanted to do to give you guys an update on how the board has been going over the last, I don't know, what we now, I finished it in January last year. It is now June this year, so it's at 17 months. And it's had plenty of use, it's got plenty of scratches, plenty of dirt on it, and it has uh, a different kind of future, which I want to talk to you guys about. But let's get down and I'll show you what it's looking like at the moment. So the board's held up pretty well. I mean, there's no structural damage, but this is plenty of surface scratches. I took it out on a, um, on a really shallow creek where there was lots of mud and it got a bit bogged. It was up to my, it was up to here in mud on my legs. So a bit of muck, muck there. These are all doing really well. Uh, they're still attached and uh, don't, no problems there. You can see here that the, um, the sticker or the, the printed uh, logo that I put under there, I didn't put any epoxy underneath it. So it didn't fully bond to the timber and you can see that it's all sort of coming apart there. I had a, um, a, a star mount here for a uh, fishing rod and I, I paddled it over to an island uh, off the coast with some mates, we had a great time, but we caught some waves coming back into the beach unintentionally. And it, I caught a wave, the nose speared into the sand and the, uh, the, the star mount got ripped off. So that's what that patch is for. If I had my time again, I'd probably use a different color uh, self-adhesive deck. I mean, the deck's been really, really good, plenty of grip, and um, it's about five mil thick, so it's got plenty of sponge to it. But the color just shows up all the dirt. And uh, I think I'd probably go, if I'm gonna do another, if I was to recondition this and put a different deck on it, I'd definitely go a black deck or something a lot darker than light gray. Uh, it's also, I've started peeling it off because I'm, I am going to take it off. It's actually adhered really well. That's me peeling it off. I, uh, it hasn't delaminated or, or become unstuck on its own. That's me peeling it off because I do want to take it off. Uh, I'm going to refurbish this board. I have some really interesting plans for it, but we'll get to that. The back deck, all looking good. A little bit of, maybe a little bit of sun damage here, but nothing to worry about. Um, bung's still working fine, no leaks around there. The board is still super airtight. So it, it doesn't take on any water or air. And I know that because when I close the bung and I go for a paddle, even for 20 minutes or so in cold weather, when I release that, there's lots of pressure built up in there, which means that the air is warming up inside, it's not escaping, and it's only being let out when I release the bung. So I'm really happy with that. So no water gets inside. These were the, the saddles I put on for a, a really simple kayak seat for when I want to sit on the, on the sup and paddle that way. And I think if I had my time again, I wouldn't have the handle proud of the deck. I'd have one of those recessed hand grips in there. So maybe something for the future. So that's the, the top of it. Let's flip it over and look underneath. Still got some light. Plenty of scratches in there. Some big ones where I put some oysters. Yeah, I'll show you guys. So here's the underside of the sup. You can see plenty of scratches. This is a really good one, but it hasn't gone through the fiberglass, which is nice. So that I'm, if I wanted to repair that, I would just use a bit of epoxy on it. Um, plenty of scratches through here. I did put on, you can see a thicker section here through here. That's where um, I wanted to put some reinforcement on the very bottom of the two chines that form the keel. And that is uh, polyester resin with a chop strand mat. And people tell you that polyester resin doesn't stick too well to timber, which is probably true, but it's too, that is fully adhered to the epoxy fiberglass skin on this sup. And it's going absolutely nowhere. So, and that's a really thick strip there which in hindsight, I would have actually carried from here all the way to the bow here as well. That would give me a lot more protection than through here. Um, you can see if you look along this up, can we see it there? So you can see it along there, there's a couple of slight dips 
in the timber. It's actually, they're, they're very hard to see. They're, they're not even as bad as I thought, but it looked like that maybe there was a couple of sections where the plywood had maybe expanded a little bit. And that was probably when I first took it uh, on holidays last uh, summer, which is, uh, was in January last year here in Australia. And the, the board was on the roof and I didn't have a bung and it was a hot, hot day. It would have been I know, like 40 degrees centigrade. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but bloody hot. And this thing had swelled up. I think I might've mentioned it in one of my other videos. So I think there was some, some structural damage there. If I had like one of those um, scopes on a bit of wire, I'd love to see what's going on inside. Um, but yeah, so I think that's what some of those deviations are on the plywood on the underside. The, I get heaps of comments about this about this fin. So many comments on my videos that that fin is going to give you no directional stability. It's too small. It's going to snap off. Now, what are you thinking at home? But um, it's actually worked really well. I don't have any problems tracking straight when I want to go straight and when I want to turn. I can actually lean this up onto its hard chines here and it will turn in the direction I want to turn. So for all the people who haven't built this up yet, definitely consider adding one of these fins to it, shallow draft, and gives great tracking. So to all the naysayers, it does work. Just turn it back over again, which I can do one-handed, more or less. I'll just straighten this guy up. So, um, what's the future for the DIY plywood sup? Well, let's have a chat about that. All right, so the future for the SUP is I'm going to use it as a test bed for my next design, which is also going to be a SUP, but it's also going to be a kayak, and it's also going to be um, a sailcraft. So uh, what I want to do, and I've already started designing in Google SketchUp, is uh, my next build da -da -da, is going to be a hybrid kayak sail SUP board, which means that I want it to be equally as good at each of those things. So I mean, it's gonna be on a kayak well. I mean, already this board here, it kayaks really well. Um, I can kayak at about so six and a half, seven Ks per hour, four Ks per hour. Not sure what that is in miles per hour or knots. Um, and I can paddle it with my SUP paddle, standing up at about um, sort of five in, in, in a bit. So I mean, it's not, it's not a race SUP, but, well, but it does what I want it to do. Um, and the next design is going to be slightly narrower, uh, have a bit more depth, and it's going to have a, uh, um, I'm probably giving a bit too much away, more than I wanted to here, but the, the next one's going to have, it's going to be slightly narrower, um, a bit thicker, and it will have a raised four deck so that I can have a, a step for a mast and a sail. And the sail I'm going to be using, first of all, and I want to try two different sails, and they're both easily available in the market for anybody who's going to be um, getting the plans for the next design. Uh, and the first one I've ordered is the Star Kayak Sails 3.3 uh, meter square sail. And uh, I've ordered that one because it's a local Australian guy, Australian guy, which is awesome. You know, I'm a big believer in supporting local. And um, he's custom making one of those sails for me right now, which is pretty exciting. So thank you and a big shout out to, to Bill Payne. Um, and one of the things I like about that sail is that it's on a roller furler mast, similar to you know a Hobie AI or TI uh, catamaran, where it has uh, a semi-rigid mast in which the sail folds around and has a single pattern, which adds a bit of depth to the top of the sail. And um, I like that because I can quickly stow it away. You know, it's got a roller furler. I have a furling line, and it has one sheet, so really simple. Uh, I'm also hoping that it has enough flex that when I want to put it away, I can actually lay it down here on the edge of the sub and it'll follow the curve of the sub and I can stow it away on deck that way. If I want to get back to paddling, either stand up or kayak style, I'm pretty free to do that. So um, this board is going to be the test bed for that. So I want to show you guys what I'm thinking. my uh, 
draftsman table here. Okay, so if we look at the SUP right now, from side on, it more or less has this kind of shape here. I'm drawing this in pencil first, and I may have to just darken up the line so you guys can see it. This is sort of freehand. Can you guys see that? Yeah, so right now, that's pretty much the outline of the SUP. And it's, um, as we know, 3,600 millimeters. Long. And it's got a width of uh, 820 millimeters. I'm Australian, I work in millimeters. If that bothers you, I do apologize, but that's how it's going to be. And then, of course, we have uh, our shallow fin here that looks something like that. And what I'm going to do is um, take the bow section. And this is a bit of a rough idea because you can see what's going on. And I'll show you on the board, but there's a join about here between the plywood sheets. And the plan is to remove the, the bow section. So cut that off. I'll set my, my circular saw so it just only cuts the three millimeters off in there. And I'm going to then uh, add two things. One is a center board case in here. And the other is immediately forward of the center board case, a bulkhead, which will go vertically up and it'll be up by around about sort of 50 millimeters. That will be, possible. that will possibly change, but that gives you a bit of an idea. And then there'll be a raised top to that bulkhead to go from gunnel to gunnel with a beam running forward and then that will have then a three millimeter plywood deck and on plan view what you will see so on side view is that that will be raised like this so the, the bow of the sup will have several things it'll have it'll have more volume and it will also allow me to have a depth for the mast base, which will obviously come up here. Now, the mast base is 28 millimeters in diameter. Uh, so I need to make sure that um, I have a slot or a socket to fit that in here, which will be thereabouts. And this bit of plywood here will have a a bit of a, a decorative curve so it actually comes slightly past that bulkhead and then when viewed from the side it'll, it'll have this kind of look there it just yeah you know, if we're if we're gonna have a bit of a test bed there's no reason why it can't look good as well now ideally this centerboard case is going to be 400 millimeters back from the mast step here. So that means I may need to cut further back. So that's gonna be the deck of the sup, and of course we've got our, our sides coming through here. So in order to go sailing, we need a mast. We need a center board to provide a lateral resistance to our center of effort, which will be up here in the sail. But what else we need, we also need a, uh, a rudder and uh, a couple options there is to let me just bring that over here so you guys can see is to square off the stern add a couple of gudgeons and pintles and remember this is the test bed for the next design so if it doesn't look as polished right now I'm okay with that and the rudder will have a box here like so with a pivot point and it will come down pivot on this position here to be able to then be stowed upwards or out to the back like so It'll be one of those push-pull configurations. So if you're looking at the, the stern 
in detail. Here's the stern. Uh, sorry, let me just correct that. It's not a pintail stern, is it? It's a square stern. So there's the stern of the SUP as we know it right now. And we have our rotor box. Obviously we have a pivot point here. And on the side, we'll have an arm. And it will be a push-pull rudder arrangement with a, with a telescopic bar coming back to the helm position here. And then there'll be a line to pull up from here over the top to stow the rudder away. So let's flip the board over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there you go guys, it's an update on the board a year and a half in and uh, it's next reincarnation, which I'm pretty excited about. I can't wait to take this thing for a buzz sailing. Um, hopefully it won't take too long. But a uh, huge shout out to all the people that have subscribed and have watched my videos on building the, building this up. Uh, really, really appreciate the support. And to all the people who I've sent plans to, which are, you know, will be well over a thousand now, get out there, start building this up, join along on the journey, on this, uh, these modifications and have a bit of fun with me and I'll see you guys in the, uh, the next episode. Cheers team.